Give God some great praise, praise up in here. Amen. Give him some praise. Amen. He's worthy. Give him some praise. It had not been for the Lord on our side. Where would we be? All right. God bless you. You may be seated. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're all on a Christian journey. Some come over mountains, some have gone through valleys, some have been in the swamps. But if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? Hallelujah. Greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here today. Somebody laid down last night and didn't wake up. But God blessed us so. His mercy and grace allowed us to be here. So I thank God for his love. And I thank God for you, each and every one. And I, of course, would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the guests that we have all the way from Gary, Indiana. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise. Many of day I've, I've, I've drove 65 north. Hello. Amen. And the opportunity to fellowship in Gary, Indiana with Dr. Calvin Blanford of Christ Baptist Church there. And of course, I had a chance to work there when I represented Wabash College. Hello. And of course, I didn't just go to the schools, but I had the opportunity to go into the homes right. of the people. And of course, the thing that um, I won't say amazed me, but there are a lot of people aren't aware that basically most of the people in Gary historically are from the South. Amen. Amen. And Amen. contrary to what uh, the media has portrayed and presented, I met some of the finest people Amen. that I've ever met in Gary, Indiana. Amen. So when I, when I tell people, especially even people from Gary, sometimes they're a little taken back when I tell them that Gary is one of my favorite places. Hello. Amen. Uh, they first they think you might be playing, but no. I can say that because all the people I've met, you know, most were Christians and most of them were, were very nice and respectful. Amen. Amen. I found I got blessed many a time right. in Gary, Indiana. Amen. Of course, the hard thing to get out of Gary when I was playing for Christmas Addicts was a victory. <laughs> because between Roosevelt and Westside, amen, we were the only city school from Indianapolis that would go up and play Roosevelt, Westside, and East Chicago. Amen. If we got two out of three, that was a good time, but it wasn't easy. So we're, we're excited and thankful that God led you to come by and fellowship with us. Amen. Amen. There's only one Christ, and we pray that uh, God will continue to show you traveling mercies. Amen. And as you go back to Gary, let them know that, that, uh, that here in Indianapolis, that First Church is about to explode. Amen. That's a the Lord is blessing and that the Holy Spirit is working. Eye has not seen nor ear heard. Amen. Amen. What God is going to do. Amen. So we thank God for that. I want to just pause for a moment. I want to ask, uh, where are my two great nephews? Quintez and Cortez, would you stand up, please? Amen. These young fellows were called into service this week to come down and cut the grass because the fellow that normally cuts the grass couldn't make it. Now you have to keep in mind that it was 92 degrees out there. And we had one lawnmower and some scissors. And it took two, two days, we broke half and half, but we found rocks, we got the rocks and wound up cutting some of the tree limbs that had fell down. It was work, but guess what? They never complained one time. Amen. Give God some praise. You want? Amen. Let our young folks know we appreciate you. Amen. We appreciate. Amen. The service. And when you get my age, you really appreciate <laughs> those young legs and those young arms. So we thank God for that service. And you know, your God will provide. Amen. You know, 
That's what the message is about today. God will provide. So let us bow in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we love you. We praise you. We find no fault in thee. We look around and see a world filled with chaos and confusion, but yet we know that you hold the world in the palm of your hand. And Lord, we trust you. We depend on you. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're doing right now, and we get excited when we think about what you have planned for us in the future. We ask now, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross, that they might not see me, but instead hear from thee. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for thou art my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every saint of God say amen, amen. and amen. 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 God bless you. You know, it's a good thing that uh, got out here, Brother Phillips and Brother Wright, because we were about to explode in the study. Amen. We got to praying. And, uh, Brother Phillips was praying, and, and uh, Deacon Wright say like a war horse pawing in the valley. <laughs> Amen. He's ready to praise God. And that's the way you should be. After a week of living in this world with all the challenges, to come to God's house. Amen. To find love, to find peace, to find joy, and to find fellowship. Amen. That's something to shout about. Amen. Something to shout about. Ask if you have your Bibles, you would turn to the book of the New Testament of Matthew. I'm going to hold up, hold up a few verses there. Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. Amen. When you have it, say, Man. It reads as follows Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is it not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowl of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for a remnant? Mm -hmm. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Hallelujah. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Hallelujah. shall he not much more clothe you, yes. O ye of little faith? Hallelujah. Therefore, Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, understanding, and application of his holy and most righteous word. You may be seated. We just want to use for a thought today, first things first. Amen. First things first. You're going to pray with me, aren't you? See, in this scriptural neighborhood, we find Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It concludes part of the sermon, what they call the Sermon on the Mound, which is Jesus' teachings and sayings to the crowds that followed him. Here we find him focusing on uh, some concerns that need to be addressed, dealing with really the emotion, the anxieties that befell both the disciples and, and many of us today. You're going to pray with me, aren't you? I'm not going to tarry long, just long enough. Uh, but here we find Jesus describing, basically, there's a, both the principle here and, and a promise. Amen. Jesus was aware of the times in which he preached, and his word still speaks to us in these times. Right. Anxiety, anxiety. Uh, for another term, for those worry, 
is a part of the human experience, it seems. Back then and even now, if we pause for right now to think about what this world is and how it is fixed, amen, if you just go to the service station and drive a little bit, unless you drive in one of those real compact to give you 40, 50 miles to the gallon, you're going to go so far and have to reach in your pocket again. And people are worried about that because it's eating up their income. I wish that a witness. Or if you turn on the TV and read about the killing of 19 children and three teachers, you've got children, or even if you go to the shopping center, there, there can be some anxiety and some worry about what can happen to the children or even to you. I wish you had a witness. If you've heard CNN talk about the mass shootings that have gone on in this country, one per day, sometimes two or three, amen, that's enough for some anxiety for some folks. I wish I had a witness up there. Y'all going to pray with me, aren't you? Or if you go to the, to the uh, supermarket, a grocery store, and, and the prices that now exist, that did not exist, I wish I had a witness. And you see them go up, the eggs and the bacon and all the things that you need start to jump up. You get a little anxiety sometimes about that. Where is it going to go? When is it going to stop? When is it going to come back? And then you hear on CNN, somebody say, well, it ain't coming back for a while. I wish I had a witness. When you go and, and attempt to, to uh, get service at your restaurant or even a fast food, and you got to wait an extra 15 or 20 minutes because they don't have staff. Or you go to the drugstore and it closes up an hour early because they don't have nobody to service you. I wish I had a witness. We talking about anxiety. Folks talking about worry. Hey, listen, under these circumstances, it's kind of normal for most of us, and some of us, and especially the world outside this building, to be worried. To be worried about what is going to happen. And then we look over and hear about what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine. And we realize that this world is unstable. Amen. That you don't control anything. And you don't know what's coming next. And now I'm just going to add the icing on the cake. Can I do that? We just came out of a two-year, I wish I had a winner, pandemic. When we couldn't even meet because there's a virus that we couldn't see that killed a million people alone in America. Now, I'm sure I haven't said it all, but I think you get the message that insecurity exists in this world, in the eyes of the world. And because of that, people get anxiety and get worried. Now, we know that Scientifically, we know that um, uh, medically that you can worry yourself to death. You know, the side effects of anxiety and worry uh, can have a physical effect on you. When I was reading about it, researching it, nausea, this is what fear can do. People keep worrying about things. You get nausea, you understand, you can get headaches, have trouble sleeping. I wish I had a witness. You can get tremors. Amen. You can get, uh, what's that one when it comes up in your stomach? A reflux. Oh, man, I've had that before. That's rough. Amen. All those things because of stress or anxiety or worry. Yes. Now, the brilliance of our Lord is he knew all about us. Yes. He knew once sin came into this world, <laughs> it was not going to be stable. Yes. Amen. And yet we find him in his words speaking to them, giving them examples. First of all, said, listen. So all you have to do is look at the birds. They're not driving a tractor. They don't have a, a barn. They don't have, but yet, you see them flying every year. I've always wondered about the deer in the wintertime. Anybody wonder? Where do they go? Because they don't be, dig no caves. They don't wear no coat. God has so fixed them that their hides hold a lot of fat. And when they get together, they generate heat. And they can stay out there in sub-zero temperatures. Jesus was teaching them. So what about the flower? 
So look at the flock. Compared to, and I mentioned Solomon. You know Solomon was well off, right? Said, so, but listen, as, as well dressed as he is, he can't compare to what God has done, amen, for the flower. What the point he was making was point, if your father loves and so concerned that he will take care of them, what will he do for you? Because, you know, you cannot serve God and worry. Amen. Worry is a sin, technically. Because when you start to worry, what you're saying is, I don't believe God can take care of my problem. No matter what it is. You know, sometimes you worry about tests. Kids worry about tests coming up. College kids, and you worry about your job, your supervisor. You can go on and on. A lot of things out there that cause you to have anxiety. But if God is your father, and he breaks it down, he gives you a directive, point blank. He said, listen, seek ye first. Told the disciples, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about what you need. I got you all the way. Not a little bit. Not some of it, and you got to do the other. I've got everything you need. I wish I had a witness. But he said, first. Because remember what he says, the promise comes after. He said, all the things that you need, all the things, some of the things that you even want, all that will be there for you. But first, things first. That's where the problem comes with us, the saints. Because we live in this world. Amen. And the world, they say when in Rome, you become Romanist, it affects us. And we start wanting what they want. Amen. I've seen folks who want, they want a big house. They get a big house, but guess what? It's still not a home. I wish I had a witness. Hey, they want a car. And I've yet to see the finest car. Now, if you notice, brothers are driving a lot of nice cars these days. Infinities, Lexus, and so forth. And so what? God did not say you can have nice things, but you can't worship them. But none of them cars, I don't care who owns it. It ain't going to say anything to you. Uh, it ain't going to comfort you. And let me tell you, if you miss your payment, you might get by. You may have to park it in the garage. I've known folks park their car around the corner because somebody's coming to get it. But when God gives you a blessing, I wish you had a witness. Can't nobody take it away. Oh, I'm glad about that. When God fixes it, boy, it's fixed. Can't nobody break it. I wish I had a witness. I like to tell the story. My wife would testify. We were planning a trip on the East Coast. Amen. And the car we had, because we just, when you, when you have a young family and you're at church, uh, you know, you, you're involved in church, church first, you're going to wear some cars out if you're not careful. Amen. So we needed one. And we went over on Keystone, and uh, the guy gave us a car. Well, no, the guy said, um, how was that? We, they promised to give you a packet with a credit card and all kind of little stuff. You get the car, $500 down. So I said, okay. I got the car, gave the money, but then they didn't send some of the stuff. So I just said, well, let me call. I had to send one payment in. I said, let me, it was a Crown Vic, wasn't it? I said, let me call. I called the, the folks, had to call down to Bloomington. And the guy got a little nasty with me. I said, well, just trying to send a payment, right? Second payment, so I can, you guys send the stuff. And the guy said, well, no. He said, because you don't have the car. He said, I got it parked right here on the lot. Well, I'm looking at that big, beautiful, gray Crown Vic. You know, a Crown Vic is like a, really a Lincoln, just with a different frame on it. I'm looking at that, and this guy's on the phone being nasty, saying he's got the car. So I put my hand over, and I remember telling Tony, I said, well, you know the guy, I said, I guess I don't know what Holy Spirit probably said. I said, well, I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, okay. And so I hung up, because I figured this. When he figures it out, I wish I had a witness. I ain't going to argue with him. When he figures it out, then we'll, we'll continue the transaction. Well, guess what? He never figured it out. He never bothered us again, and the car was there. And then later on, wow. later on, some years later, a woman called 
to say something about the car. Not about owning a car, but something about the title, something the car. Point being, God wanted us to have that car. Amen. Amen. And we got that car. I wish I had a witness. Amen. When God wants you to have something, you're going to get it. Amen. I couldn't, I couldn't dissuade the man, amen, to, to go ahead and realize I got the car because he's being nasty and said, no, I got the car right here. Oh, I wish I had a witness. I'd get to you after a while. But what I'm saying is God will take care of your needs according to his riches and glory. When I think about the, the church, the first, uh, second church that I pastored, and we had to get a mortgage. And we went through the process, went through that. We checked with six banks or whatever, and finally we found the right place. God worked it out. And then they said this. They said, you don't have to have a cosign. That was for over $150,000. Now, I don't know anywhere in America where a group of black folks won't have to have a cosign. Oh, I wish I had a win. When God fixes it, you understand? When God fixes it, boy, it's fixed. What Jesus is telling us, first things first, when you seek after the kingdom. Now, seek after it isn't just going. There, there's got to be a commitment. You've got to be in the kingdom to be serving the kingdom. God has given us a directive. Go ye therefore. You've got to be about kingdom business. Too many of us get tied up in worldly business, and kingdom business becomes part-time. But no, God is saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That has to be the first thing in your, in your life. Everything else will be, you have to worry about food. He'll see about food. You have to worry about a job. You'll get a job. Amen. I wish I had a witness. You worried about your kids? He'll take care of that. They that wait on the Lord. That's the problem. Don't, don't try to rush God. He's got the answer. He's waiting on you. He's working on your problem. Go ahead and seek the kingdom. Some folks won't come to church because things aren't right. I wish I had a witness. They won't come to church because things aren't right. Well, guess what? Things aren't going to ever get right. But guess what? When you seek ye first, God takes care of those things. Paul put it this way. He said, forgetting those things that are behind the problems, the, the bad situations, the name calling, whatever was going on, and he suffered quite a bit for the, for the kingdom. He said, but forgetting those things, first things first. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We have to reset our priorities. Now that's the problem because some of us want to go halfway problem, I think he described that when he said some people have uh, one side, foot on one side and one on the other. And he said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spill you out of my mouth. No, you're going to have to get fired up like, like Brother Wright was fired up with that prayer today. Amen. There's got to be something in you that moves you toward God. And what the, what's in you is that spirit, once you yield and allow that relationship to grow, now you're going to be drawn toward Amen. The world will turn you off to a certain extent. I don't know about you, but I turn off the TV. Amen. Yeah, amen. I, the, the kids don't say, well, you know, you watch Western sometimes. I said, well, I'm going to watch. I don't want to listen to all that mess. Amen. 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 You know, they ain't saying nothing good on CNN after a while. They're just going to keep giving you stuff that, you know, shooting after shooting, killing. Yes. On and on. The world is messed up. Lord Your answer will never be in the world. Because you were not designed for this world. Amen. Jesus told us. What did he tell us? He said, my kingdom. I wish I had a witness. My kingdom is not of this world. You wonder why it's crazy. Because Satan is all up in here. But be still and know that I'm God. <laughs> all you have to do is wait. Wait on me. <laughs> Somebody said he may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. I wish I don't know about you. I've, I've experienced that so many times. So anymore, all I'm going to do is wait. That's all I'm going to do because I know that he'll make a way. Somebody said, what, well, he's a way maker. Think about that. All the way from Mississippi, picking that cotton. I wish I had a witness. All the way up here in Gary. And they said Gary's supposed to be the crime capital of the world. I was trying to figure out how could they say that about Gary 
when we were leading the nation in murders down in Indianapolis. I wish I had a witness. Oh, something's wrong with that, isn't it? Now we see, and they said we got to, at one point we had the, the murder rate, but they were saying Gary was the murder capital. Huh? You can't believe what man says, but you can trust what God says all the time. Amen. And he will not have you ignorant. He'll tell you the truth about everything. He'll reveal it in time. And that's why I tell Gary folks when I meet him, Gary's one of my favorite cities. Amen. Because I found love, friendship, fellowship. Amen. Whenever I was called that way. And so you'll never get me to say anything less about Gary. But the world would have you say, because it's called an African-American city, that it's this or that. The danger is when you start believing what the world says. Same thing about a person. Isn't that one of the most character assassination? People will talk about folk, but guess what? You let the Lord reveal it to you. Amen. The Lord will let you know if a person is right or wrong. Don't rush it. I tell the, tell the, the, the young people that we have here, I tell when it comes to friendship, let God pick your friends. You'll find out a real friend there are folks who get in your face, especially if you got something going on. Don't have some money in your pocket. I don't think you look halfway cute, you, whatever. Hey, folk, folks will be drawn to you for a lot of reasons. Most of those are the wrong reason. But the Bible says the Lord will give you a friend that's a, a stick closer than a brother. But the ultimate friend says there's not a friend like who? The lonely Jesus. They said, no, not one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The other things will be added. I ain't, this ain't something I heard after 69 years. It's something I know. I tried it my way. It wasn't going nowhere. I tell you the story all the time. Amen. But God stopped me in my tracks. Amen. Had no idea what God had planned for me. But I know if he can stop me, he can stop anybody. And he stopped me, and he revealed to me, and he called me. And guess what? Forgetting those things that are behind, I'm pressing toward the mark. In fact, I forgot about a lot of stuff back there. I'm still excited about the kingdom and heaven itself. If you don't see me anymore, I'll meet you up there. <laughs> of course, I hope you see me for a little while longer. <laughs> We got some work for the kingdom to do. But if not, you can't get in for me and I can't get in for you. I got to get in for myself. Some say I want to be in that number. When what? The saints go marching in. Amen. I don't care if it's the last number, the middle number, up, up near the front. As long as God's calling, I'll be somewhere listed for my name. First things first. Jesus was letting them know. Don't worry about the things of the world. That's what the world does. So you focus on your salvation, what God has done for you. You focus on the kingdom. We have to be concerned about other people beside ourselves. As I've said many times, heaven rejoices over one lost soul. Then let's, if that's the case, we want them to throw some parties. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to do some baptisms. Amen. I, I already know the Lord is so. We're getting ready to do some baptisms. Amen. Some folks are changing around. While we're talking right now, there's some folks that the Lord is touching and working on right now. I've never called myself a prophet, but I know what God is doing. Amen. And when he does it, amen, don't be in awe because he can do anything but fail. But be ready to shout about it. Be ready to jump about it. Be ready to give God praise about it. Because only God can change some of the situations that are out here. When the praises go up. Amen. When the praises go up. What? The blessings. But I like that song. Say, anyway, he blessed me. Anyway, I'll be all right. Amen. First things first. The Lord had a blessing. To his word. Let us pray. Yes. Eternal God, our Father, we're just thankful. Thank you today, Lord. We get excited because we know you're a loving God. You loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son for us. And we're mindful in this 
this world of chaos and confusion, that it, it can cause anxiety for those that don't know you, for those who don't trust you. But we trust you. We believe you. We know you can do anything but fail. You know, your word will not turn to you void. You've made promises that only you can keep. So we thank you, Lord, that we don't worry, that we don't have that anxiety, that no matter what comes, we will trust you. So, Lord, we ask you now to just continue to let your Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct us. Like Paul, forgetting those things that are behind, we're going to press toward the mark. Amen. So we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name and for his sake, that you would be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come to your feet. Give God a mighty hand praise. He's worthy. Somebody here today. Oh, come on now. You can give him more praise than that. If you know him, if you love him, amen, you can give him. You can give him some praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. There might be somebody here today who doesn't know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. Now is that opportunity for you to come down and unite with the body of Christ. Amen. God loves you. Jesus is calling and he's tenderly called. And he's calling for you. I don't know who you are. I know many of us have accepted Christ as our Savior, but somebody may not.